Congratulations on the purchase of your new tenant power sweeper. Not only will this machine perform well the day you get it, but for a long time thereafter. Continued peak performance depends on how you care for the machine. It's important to regularly inspect the machine and maintain the proper oil and fluid levels, make the necessary adjustments when they are needed, regularly inspect and change normal wear items, and to operate the machine properly. By doing this, you'll get greater life out of the machine and be happier with its performance. That'll make your job a whole lot easier. In order to keep your machine in peak sweeping condition, it's important to perform a few quick checks before starting the unit. In addition, you should understand the operation of the machine and check a few items when your sweeping is complete so it's ready for use the next day. In this program, we'll discuss the proper care and operation of the Model 800 Power Sweeper. First, you should understand how the sweeper works. The highly efficient direct throw principle uses a one-piece brush to throw dirt and debris forward into the hopper. The four-stage filter system begins with a deflector flap that keeps rocks and sand from entering the dust control system. Next, the permafilter removes moisture and dust. A fine mesh screen then traps fine mesh fibers before entering the dust filter. Finally, dual canister filters screen minute particles before the air is finally exhausted out the rear of the machine. Before you start sweeping, let's quickly review a few items. First, open the engine compartment and search for loose fittings, obstructions, and check the oil level. If necessary, add enough oil to reach the full mark. Be sure to use the proper SAE oil for your application. This is listed in your service manual. The radiator pre-screen should be checked and any apparent debris removed. If it is necessary to remove the screen, simply unhook the spring mechanism. The screen splits in two so that it can be easily removed. When reinstalling, be sure to line up the guide pins on the two halves. While you're in the engine compartment, check the condition of the V-belt. There should be approximately a quarter of an inch deflection on the belt. Adjust if necessary. The engine air intake system should also be checked. The air filter service indicator indicates when to clean or replace the air filter element. Each day, check the hose connections and remove and clean the dust cover. When replacing the cover, be sure the arrows are pointing upward. Next, check the coolant level, then the radiator and hydraulic oil cooling fins. They should be unobstructed so that the air can flow freely through the radiator and the hydraulic oil cooler for maximum cooling. Finally, check the hydraulic fluid level sight gauge with the hopper down and the fluid cold. It should read between the add and full marks. Now let's move on to the hopper. The hopper skirt should be checked to see that it is within one eighth of an inch off the ground. Now onto the brushes. They are extremely important for top sweeping performance. The side brush should be replaced when the bristle length reaches two inches. The main brush should be replaced when the bristle length reaches one and a quarter inches. Neither brush should have wire, string, rope, or bandy material wrapped around them. What's more, the main brush should be removed and rotated at least once a week. This will ensure even wear for maximum sweeping performance. While the brush is out, check the skirts beneath the machine for wear or tears. Proper dust control depends on their condition. Finally, check the fuel level. If you haven't used the machine before, here's a quick overview of the controls and instrumentation. To the right of the operator, we have the key switch. It is turned clockwise to start the engine, counterclockwise to stop the engine. Above the key switch is the two-speed main brush switch. In the top position, the brush is rotating at its normal speed. In the bottom position, used often for light litter, it's in the high speed mode. This two speed system allows you to sweep different types of debris, although the number one speed is the normal sweeping speed. Special debris situations call for the second speed of the brush. To the left is the instrument panel. In the bottom right corner, there is the engine speed control 
pound on gasoline and LP machines. Diesel machines use a throttle lever located left of the driver's seat. Set the engine speed switch. The engine will automatically start when the first light is on. Idle speed is indicated by the second light. The third light is our normal sweeping or transporting speed. Above that is the vacuum fan switch. Next is the headlight switch. To the left of that is the optional rotating light switch. And finally, the filter shaker. The filter shaker is timed for 45 seconds, although it can be turned off in the middle of its cycle. To the left is the engine hour meter, which records the hours that the engine is running. To its left is the fuel gauge. LEDs will indicate the amount of fuel that is left in the tank on gasoline and diesel machines. On LP machines, when the tank is full, none of the segments are lit. The last two segments will flash when the tank gets low on fuel or is empty. Next are the three machine indicator lights. In the lower right is the hopper door light. This light will come on when the hopper door is open. Above that is a clogged filter indicator. This comes on to indicate that the filter is clogged and needs to be shaken clean. Above that is the main brush shutdown light. This will come on when there is excessive down pressure on the main brush or if there is a problem with the main brush hydraulic circuit. On the far left are the four warning lights. First, the battery indicator. This light will come on if the voltage of the battery is below 10 volts. Below that is the oil pressure light, which will light when the engine oil pressure falls below 5 PSI. Below that is the water temperature light, which comes on if the coolant temperature is above 225 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 degrees Celsius. The final warning light is the temperature light, which comes on when there is excessive heat in the hopper. The vacuum fan will automatically turn off if this light comes on. To the left of the instrument panel is the hopper lift lever. Simply pull and hold the lever to raise the hopper up. To hold the hopper at a specific height before dumping, simply lift up on the lever or let it go to the middle position. To lower, push the lever up and hold it until the hopper returns to the down position. Next is the hopper rollout lever. Pull down and hold the lever to roll the hopper out. To bring the hopper in, push the lever forward. To the left of that is the hopper door lever. To open the door, simply pull the lever towards you. To close the door, push the lever forward. It is necessary to hold it in the forward position until the hopper door open light goes off. Below is a choke knob. This should be used in cold starting situations. Then push back in when the engine warms. Below that is the side brush down pressure knob. This knob is used to increase or decrease the pressure of the side brush. Behind that is the side brush lever. The side brush is lowered and turned on by moving the brush lever forward. To raise and turn the side brush off, pull the lever back and to the left. Below is the parking brake and release lever. To set the parking brake, simply step on the pedal. To release the brake, pull up on the lever. Some machines are equipped with a handbrake. To the right is the brake pedal that stops the machine. The directional control pedal is used to control the direction and speed of travel. The toe of the directional pedal is adjustable. Simply remove the clevis pin, adjust the top of the pedal to the desired angle, and then replace the clevis pin. Above the pedals are the resettable circuit breakers. Above the circuit breakers are the horn button, steering wheel, and the steering column tilt lever. Simply pull up on the tilt lever before. Spend just a couple of minutes familiarizing yourself with these controls. While tenant sweepers are basically simple machines to operate, let's review the procedures so you can completely understand. Once you're seated, adjust the comfort setting on the seat. Turn it clockwise to increase the stiffness 
or counterclockwise to decrease it. Be sure the parking brake is set. Adjust the steering wheel for your comfort. Directional control pedal should be in neutral and all the hydraulic controls in the off position. Pull out the choke if needed and turn the ignition switch to the start position. If the engine fails to start within 15 seconds, wait 30 seconds and try again. Once the machine is started, fully return the choke lever to its off position. The final check is the brush pattern. With the throttle switch in the normal sweep position, check the pattern of the main brush by finding a spot on the floor on which you won't mind leaving a mark. To lower and start the brush, place the main brush switch in normal speed. Let it run for 20 to 30 seconds and then turn the main brush off and drive forward. You leave a polished mark on the floor. Its width indicates the brush pattern. The mark should be two inches wide from end to end. If it isn't, make the adjustment using the knob located to the right of the driver's seat. Turn it clockwise to raise the brush, counterclockwise to lower it. Lower the side brush. Turn on the main brush to your desired sweeping speed. Turn on the vacuum fan and begin to sweep. The side brush is especially suited to sweep right up to curbs, storage racks, and walls. What's more, it can be used to increase the machine's sweeping path. The speed and direction of travel are determined by a single foot pedal. The further you push down on the toll, the faster you go forward. The more you push on the heel, the faster you go in reverse. If you are new to tenant sweepers, spend a few minutes sweeping in an open area. Because its steer is using a single rear wheel, it is very responsive to steering wheel movement. It may take a few minutes to get used to, but you'll find its tremendous maneuverability a great aid in sweeping indoors and out. Once you started sweeping, how fast should you go? This depends on the debris that you have to sweep and the congestion in your area. In general, you should sweep no faster than a person could walk, about three to four miles per hour. For most sweeping chores, your tenant machine will do an admirable job of sweeping. Once you have finished sweeping, or when the hopper becomes full, it is time to dump the contents. First, raise the side brush and turn off the main brush. Close the hopper dump door, then turn off the vacuum fan. Push the filter shaker button. This will activate a 45 second timer shaking the filters clear of dust. After shaking, travel to your dump site. Pull back on the hopper lift lever. Once the hopper is raised to the height which you desire, pull the rollout lever down to roll the hopper out. Then open the dump door by pulling back on the dump door lever. A note on safety, if you leave the machine while the hopper is in the raised position, be sure you're on a level surface, the parking brake is set, and always put the hopper safety arm in position. Once you are done sweeping for the day, return the sweeper to its parking place. Set the parking brake, move the throttle switch to the idle position, and turn off the ignition switch. By performing the daily service checks and following the proper operating procedures for your particular machine, this will ensure you have a sweeper that will perform in top condition throughout its useful lifetime. You'll find it sweeps better, has fewer maintenance problems, effectively enhances your work environment, and we're sure you'll be happy with the machine for a long time.